right there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's a Sunday afternoon, so you know what time that is. It is time for selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50. I'm your one host, Jay. And I'm Peg. Hi, everybody. How are we doing on this? Yeah, I haven't said that in a while. Yay. Hey, hey. We, got, we got a gorgeous hot Sunday again here in Ohio. I mean, we are setting all kinds of records. 92 the other day, 90 yesterday, 88 today. This is crazy. That's why I'm wearing tank tops in, in uh, September. And it's never uh, cool here. It is. Uh, it is a not hot 72 in Henderson right now. Yeah. Ohio is warm. We're in tank tops in, in uh, September. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Never hold uh, on. Hold cool on. Here. It is. Hold on. Uh, um, I'm going to my, bang my headboard already. <laughs> when I went to change some things, I, you know. Yeah. Yep, and then Salt Lake City on Tuesday, and the high in Salt Lake City right this moment is a whopping forty-five degrees. But we'll talk about yeah. Salt Lake City here in oh. a second. Well, all right. Some, so every week, yes, ma. Well, I was say, as some of you know, uh, you know, Dad and I took a little trip this uh, past weekend. We left on Friday and went to uh, Hagerstown, Maryland, to go get our blue crab with our bestie friends uh, Stu and Sue. And uh, they were awesome and delicious. And uh, we go to this place called the Stadium. In case anybody lives in the area and likes blue crab, I highly recommend it. But we always drag our besties thrifting, and uh, they get into it a little bit. But usually they're they're waiting for us to come out of the store. But uh, I had a little argument with your father, and uh -oh. we whenever yes, yeah, so whenever we have a little bet going, uh, we bet a nickel. I'm holding my nickel. <laughs> <laughs> And the bet was he was trying to tell Stu and Sue all about Levi jeans and the little E and the big E. And Dad insisted the little E was more rare. And I, uh -huh. <laughs> and I was adamant about, no, it's the large E. So, of course, he gets on his phone and starts looking through everything. And, uh, and he finds that the people are talking about, you know, small E's. I said, yeah, they're just indicating it's a small E. Find one with a large E and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's why I have my nickel here. <laughs> you more than a nickel. No, we always keep it friendly. Nickel bet. That's as high as we go. But I did, have a, I, a, <laughs> I did have a little thrifty encounter, kind of. We're in this. Uh, we're in a Goodwill, and uh, this lady has got a huge, gigantic Christmas trees. And it kind of lights up, but the string of lights are half falling off of it. It, it looks horrible. And it was $9.00. And she asked Dad and I, what do you think? Should we buy, Should I buy it for $9? I didn't have the heart to tell her why I thought it was a piece of crap. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but she ended up buying it. And she, oh, my God, she plugged it in and looked at it and, you know, did a million things with it. But it, it was in such bad condition. I mean, I wouldn't have paid 50 cents for the darn thing, you know, you know how mom is. But, uh, you know, that, that was my little encounter with a, with a gal who, who thought it would look great. So to each his own, I guess, right? Yeah. In the eye of the beholder, as they say. Now, there won't be a uh, thrifty business this week because I'll be in Utah. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But uh, just to tie into what Mom was talking about, uh, one of my scores on the next thrifty business show, which will be a week from Thursday, will be a big Levi, big E Levi Jean something or other. I'll be got to tune oh. in right now. So cool. there cool. you go. All right. So, you know, each week, uh, usually the way I work my weeks, usually about 21 hours before a show time, I'm like, what should we do? I know. <laughs> That's kind of how my weeks go. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, my uh, my assistant made a little boo-boo, and that uh, I was looking at her after giving her a little bit of grief for it, and I'm like, oh, that's a good topic, because I can see others making the same mistake. So uh, as the title was, make sure you're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges, because a lot of times the item you're holding can look like other items. If you don't do a little bit more digging, you won't realize you have the better one or you could have the worse one. Now, right. I want to uh, caution everyone is don't get into what I call analysis paralysis. I've had people uh, in the thrifting board mention they've been researching an item for over a year. No, 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 no. 
<laughs> oh, man, man. I've, heard, I've heard hours, and, and that even makes me cringe. But, uh, but you should know what you have and what it should be priced at. So we're going to start with the example that my unfortunate uh, uh, assistant is going to catch a little hell for her, and uh, me too, because she left $40 on the table, give or take. Yeah. And that was a bummer. So this is uh, Perry the Platypus from Phineas and Ferb. This is a full one-piece costume. Wow, that's really nice. And uh, as you can see, it's got the little feet covering. So when you're wearing your shoes, the platypus feet cover your feet. So you can mm -hmm. tell when something's a little bit better when they even go that far to do the feet covering. And here is the whole thing, uh, you know all the way top to bottom. So obviously it's got a hood, that, but it makes you look like you're Perry the Platypus. So I'm standing someplace on Friday and I hear the cha-ching and I'm like, sweet, we sold the, a Halloween costume. And then I looked and I'm like, oh. $21, that seems a little low. And I, you know, I, I check her work a little bit, but if I sat and researched every single price and everything she listed, there'd be no point of having an assistant. So. No. I let it go, but man, it was eating at me Friday night, and I'm like, that just does not seem right. So I got home, and I looked, and so there seems to be three levels of Perry the Platypus costume, and unfortunately, she compared the price to the bottom level. Uh, uh, so here is the bottom level. It has the little hood head, but uh, it doesn't have the feet covering, and as you can see, it's kind of baggy and sad Yeah, compared to what I had. And so that is selling in the $17 range. Here it is again, uh, um, uh, selling in the six to $20 range. Uh, this is a kid's one that sold for 52 bucks. Now it's still not ours. Here, here's mine that sold for 21. Okay, we're back to the sad one, 18 bucks, 22 bucks. Uh, so let's get down to where she should have compared. Now here's one that's even a little nicer. It has the feet not connected, but the feet you put over your shoes. So that sold 70 bucks. Here's the sad one in the $20 range. Here's the one with the feet oh, sold for 100. And oh. here's the exact one I have that sold for $67. Oh and, dear. Yeah. And I think there was one more. No. So this is the range we should have been in. We should have been in the 70 to $80 range because it is a nice, uh, uh, a nice outfit she should not have compared it to the lesser brand one and right. the, actually these are actually just pajamas whereas the one i sold was a full uh costume not really pajamas so mm -hmm. that's where she went awry yeah now jason where did you find that costume and all those other costumes were those mostly savers all they savers just, all the costume oh god i mean you you I looked all weekend when we were thrifting, and look, what I saw was crap. What you find is uh, You have two savers in Cleveland. How many times have you been there since the Halloween stuff's been out, Ma? Well, I haven't. Okay, what are you waiting for? Come on now. This is, you know, it only happens at this time of year. That's true. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get in there. Actually, I might go tomorrow. Maybe I'll, Mom doesn't have the kids tomorrow. I have them Tuesday, Wednesday this week, so. Oh, okay. heck yeah, I'd be up there yeah, hitting both of them. Yeah, and Monday is 50% off day, so. All the time there. Well, then I would definitely be there tomorrow. Now I only paid six bucks for him, but man, that is not enough profit. That that was so. Someone's like, "Holy shit, I scored!" <laughs> so make sure. Yeah, make, that hurt. We're gonna give you some more examples here, but make sure when you're comparing something, you are comparing apples to apples. There is another. Go go ahead. Go ahead, Ma. As a dad and I were arguing over that today uh, because. As we were doing some research and some of the stuff that we found over the weekend, you know, he wants to price it like in between the two prices or lower because he thinks that's the hook to pull them in. And I keep telling him no, and I always change some of it, but you know, when it gets to mom to, to do the listing. And I said, Hon, you have to think of perceived value. You know, that's not how you do it. Yeah. You, know, you go around and around on that. So uh, Widco is uh, the name of a company that does not exist anymore. Uh, they make fantabulous tiki stuff, and not just tiki stuff. They make a whole conquistador line and uh, a whole Asian line. And if you've ever seen a picture of or been to Graceland, the jungle room, that is all Widco furniture. If you follow my um, travels and uh, collections, you know I got Widco stuff. Mom's got Widco stuff. And so, oh, I'm holding Widco stuff. Hang on a second, Mom. I've lost my mouth. There we go. 
Okay. Yeah. I just pulled off a piece off my wall. And I thought, just well, yeah. pieces off her wall. Yeah. Uh, that is obviously not, uh, that is not a tiki. That is kind of from the Conquistador line. Uh, but Wicco definitely has a look and a feel. Now, when we say compare apples to apples, I have a buddy named Max who is making modern versions of mm -hmm. the Wicco world. And he sells them for $300. And you might think, wow, $300, that's a nice price. Well, here's the Wicco version, and that sold for $750. Right. So you got to compare apples to apples. Now, Max is using Wicco in his title. He really shouldn't, although it is an homage to Wicco, but no. Wicco doesn't exist anymore, so there's really going to be no one to report it, to zero it, to bust Max's chops. No. I get what Max is doing. Uh, for those who can't find a vintage, he's going modern. But, you know, we're talking, and, and usually, and these have been a little soft lately. They've been selling neighborhood for 800 but there's a point in time where they're selling for twelve to 1500 Well, yeah. Max is not going to command twelve to 1500 for his. He is going to get three hundred. So there, it looks the same to the untrained eye, but totally different pricing. Right, and you know, as I was kind of going through these for you to to find some examples, it is amazing to me how many are using wood coat, Jason, and it's not even close, honey. I mean, it's terrible. I said, oh my goodness, yeah, pretty pretty bad. Did now, you show? What? Yeah, did you show the one picture of that wood coat? No, no, I, I took it out because I didn't have a comparable. So, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> okay. So, uh, one of the brands of jeans we always tell you to be on the lookout for or Bolo is Jenko, J-N-C-O. If you don't know that, write it down right now. Uh, Jenko was really big in the early 90s in the raver, skater, little white boys wanted to be edgy crowd. And uh, they sell for quite a bit of money. However... Uh, a Jenko had went out of business. They saw the demand for their jeans. They came back into business. So the modern current ones aren't sought after. It's the vintage ones. So here's a pair of modern Jenkos, and there's the logo right there. Uh, it sold for a whopping $9.99. So what I want to show you here is I'm about to show you two exact Jenkos. They're both the same company, but apples to apples. Just because you found Jenkos doesn't mean you found good ones. Now, if you find the vintage ones like this with the snails on it, now you got $125 in your pocket wow. instead of $9.99. And uh, there's a little more flair to it. The legs were bigger back then. And let's see, they, do they have a good shot of the uh, label? Yeah, we'll yep, see. So, there's, okay. so there's the Jenko slug. Cool. So make sure, like, when you, like, I left some Jenkos behind the other day at the thrift store because they, I, they were older, but they weren't exciting. And people are paying for the ones with the animals on it, like the slug or the woolly mammoth or the gorilla. Uh, <clears throat> and so you want to make sure that you don't get just excited because you saw the brand label. Just make sure it's the ones you should be buying. And that really, you know, that's kind of true with anything. There are a few brands that no matter what it is, you should buy it. But this is one of those examples where some in the brand are worth your time, really. Because it ain't worth your time to sell nine ninety nine jeans. No, I agree. I agree. And I've yet to find Jenko, Jace. Mom has looked at a million pairs back. I've yet to find one. I've found a bunch, but I've never found any, any of the good ones with the animals on the back like this slug. Uh -huh. So I found decent ones, but I still have yet to find the animal ones. All right. Well, I'll keep looking. Okay. Here's a very, very timely example of this is where you need to do your research, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. This is a current hardback version of the book It by Stephen King. It is currently the biggest horror movie hit of all time. Right. Broke all kinds of box office records. It was a four-part miniseries back in the 80s uh, starring John Ritter and uh, Tim Curry. And so this modern, current version of the book sold for $7.99. Not a big deal. However, if you find a first printing and you're going to see it don't look all that different, Oh, $225. Whoa, way big different story. Now, the way you would know that is you would look inside. It's going to be the 1986 date, not a more modern date starting with two, like a 2015 or whatever. So uh, make sure that, you know, these are the kind of things. Uh, a first pricing of it is something you should definitely look for. And here's a little bonus tip. On books where authors sign their books quite frequently, if you see them, even if they're modern, I always grab Stephen King hardbacks and pop over to the first page or two to see if I can find an autographed copy. 
Same with Howard Stern. Howard Stern wrote a couple of books. He signed tons of them. And then I can see them real quick in the racks. And when I see them, I pull them out just in case I find an autographed copy. Now, I never have, but I know others have. So always right. double check. Right. Boy, that's a that's a, quite a difference. Ask it just because you think it's modern, check. Yeah. And then don't buy it just because you think you're going to get a lot of money. You got to check. Yep. Is this all making sense to everyone watching right now? Hope I hope. Dang. Any questions out there, anybody? All right. So, uh, of course, I can't, you know, go through this without making a tiki mug uh, comparison. <laughs> so Don the Beachcomber was the inventor of the tiki bar. This is a Don the Beachcomber rum barrel. And this is a modern version you can pick up from the one and only Don the Beachcomber in Huntington Beach. But if you look, it look it's sold for $41. If you look, it looks exactly like the vintage one for the most part to the untrained eye. There's a vintage one, yet that sold for $109. Yeah. Definitely so again. No. Yeah. You know, hon? I mean, definitely different. They just have to know. Right. But an untrained non-tiki person might not notice. And so this is where you should do a little more digging and realize who made the modern version and who made the old version. Realize it's an 86 version of it and not a 2010 version of it. Or you private message Jason and he will help you. <laughs> oh yeah, especially on the Tiki stuff. Absolutely. Now here's an example. Uh, this is a bolo I like to teach all the time. Uh, Slipknot's one of my favorite bands. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're uh, they're nice Sunday church going music. And uh, my mother's not paying attention apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. I was looking over at the chat. What did you just say? Uh, I, saw it. I said Slipknot is nice Sunday going to church music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, and I teach this bolo often, but it's a, good, it's a good lesson for what we're teaching today right now. When they released this album, this was their first self-titled album, uh, their, their major label debut in 1999. They wrote two songs based on a short story they read online, and were under the impression from their management or their producer that they could they could write songs about it. Uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know if they were told it wasn't copyrighted or if they had permission. Well, they wrote two songs about it, put it on the album, and the second the album came out, whoever owned the rights to the short story said, hey, what the hell? And so they had to pull it. Now, I want to show you some comparisons here because here's the front of the CD. Uh, this is the version without the two extra songs. And here's the back, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here it is with the two extra songs, and the front and the back look almost identical. So uh, if you're not looking close enough, you would never notice, but on the back of this one, there's two extra tracks uh -huh. called Frail Limb Nursery, see up here in the title, and Purity. If you see those two songs on the back, the CD, as you can see, is worth 30 bucks. If it doesn't have those two songs, the CD's worth uh, $4.15. Right. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, you gotta look a little bit. Yeah, you're gonna have to because mom would never notice that, you know. Yeah, but I I see that I know that spine, I know that cover. So everywhere I see it, thrift store, record store, garage sale, I pull it immediately and look for those two songs. If they're there, boom, quick purchase. If they're not, there's no need to buy it. Did you have zero need to buy it? In these two titles, they use capital letters, Jason, both both examples you showed. What about capital letters, Mom? They're using capital letters in their title. Oh, oh yeah, here, here let's let's talk about this awful title. No. For, for starters, it's not rare and it is not out of print. <laughs> 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 it is sold millions of copies. That means that means A, it's not rare rare. B, yeah. it's still in print because they're a hugely popular band, and their first album was incredible, so it is not out of print. And ICP is a different band than St. Clown Posse, and their followers are called Juggalos, so they're totally keyword spamming. Yeah, this title is horrible. Oh, my. That's, that's bad. Now, look at the other one, Jason, for that sulfur. Yep. The 29. See, they still use yep. uh, caps. Yep. Now, here's a, here's a good term if you do find this CD, because there's not a lot to write. The CD is called Slipknot. The band's called Slipknot. So yeah. once you put Slipknot's CD and it has Purity and Frail and Nursery, you've got some space left. So first pressing is good because these two songs are only on the first pressing. Kind of like the uh, first pressing of It, people want to know, and that's what the collectors are looking for. Okay. okay. That's good. All right. Mom's got a couple examples. Okay. 
All right. Um, a lot of you know that um, I, I have sold Hadley, and I still have a collection of it from my mom, and Jason has some pieces. And it's just something that you need to be aware of out there when you are looking. I, I showed this particular um, example because it's this pottery here is very close to Hadley. So, you know, even though it's blue, unless it's marked Hadley, and every Hadley piece is marked, you know, make sure. Um, I do have some live examples. Jason, I think I, I copied one. Yeah, there's a bowl. But, um, you know, my, this is from, well, I, actually, I have the teapot and the cup and saucer for sale, which is a cutie. But you know, I still have saved a lot of my mother's pieces, everybody. And um, there's the salt and pepper shaker. See? And I, I should be showing you, you know, where the time, gang, because M.A. Hadley is on yeah, every. I got live examples, too, Ma. I can oh, good, good. I can run with, yeah. I can run with the big dogs like my mom. I got live examples. Yeah. Um, on the platters, uh, I didn't bring an example of a platter out. The platters are not on the bottom, Jason. They're on the side of the bowl uh, of, of the dish because they're like a, a long rectangle. So, but they're not. But they're marked. I mean, that's just the thing you need to know. Uh, Hadley sells very well, everyone. So if you do run across it, um, you know, I would say as, as long as it's you know not expensive, you know, pick it up because. Um, it's always it's always sold. I'm down to my last two pieces, and I had about ten when I started on the batch that I had found. And uh, you know, it's always always extra money in the pocket. So, Hadley, just don't get confused with other ones that look similar. I wish I had a little bit better example. That was the best one I could find to show you. Okay, we all back to our dear old buyers carolers. If you take a look at the slot, if you're not used to seeing a caroler. You definitely would think, oh, those look by, like the buyer's carolers. They have copied them really a lot because they got the open mouse like buyer's carolers do. Um, Jason, do they show that? Yeah, they are. They're on a base. Like I, I saw the base on the one guy. Yeah. And um, Ooh, 699, so, made in China. Woo! Woo. <laughs> so they are definitely not the buyer's carolers. Um, so then, Jace, go over to the, the real ones, honey. Real ones coming up. All right. Okay. So, you know, to begin with, most most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, they're on a green base. However, their summertime ones are, are usually on a base, like kind of looks like sand, but they're always on the base. And, of course, I've got my example here. I've got a little Valentine girls to show you. You guys know you've got to see that. You've, it's just got to be on there unless it came off. Sometimes they do come off because the glue doesn't stick always. And they're always dated with the year unless you've got something very, very early. Um, you know, they do have the open mouths. Not always. There are a few exceptions to the rule. Well, here, in this, in your example, two of them don't have their mouth open. Exactly. So, you know, that, that isn't necessarily, you know, a, a, a definite trait, even though most of them do. Um, even, and even my little Valentine girls, you know, she does not, she's not singing. But, uh, you know, there, there are certain markings and you just, you know, like I say, the base, it's, it's, if you see the base, you guys, you you should have it. I mean, you know, there should be no question about it. Uh, the base with the marking of, of buyer's carolers and dated. And that's that's the nice thing about their, their stickers because most of them have the year, you know, that they were produced. And remember, buyer's carolers are all handmade from scratch. Uh, they have quite a quite a factory there in Shelfon, Pennsylvania. And uh, each, you know, girl sitting in there or guy makes sitting at her desk. And, you know, each one does look a little bit different because they will dress them to their liking. So not everyone is exact, even though they're similar, they're not exact because they will do different things, you know, uh, with each character. So it's, uh, it's quite a production, all handmade, and, and that's why they're pricey, and they still bring good money. Uh, I just, uh, I got one more example I just thought of, and if you watch my thrift haul, you saw this the other day, but, you know, artists like Billy Joel, Britney Spears, Phil Collins, you know, they've sold millions and millions of CDs, so... Billy Joel River of Dreams isn't worth your time. It's a penny CD. That's what it sells for. And then if you look at the front, it looks just like River of Dreams. If you look at the back, it shows the 10 songs on River of Dreams. But I'm able to show this. Uh, so okay. blown out. Uh, yeah. That five at the beginning means it's an import. So that would have slowed me to look at it. But there's a little little sticker down here, and I'll read it to you. It says, include free special limited edition live five-track CD. So if you open it up, there's the normal 10-song uh, CD, and then behind it, da da da, da is a five-track bonus CD. It's called Five Live, 
And so not a common uh, version. So whereas the regular version's worth a penny, and if you were just looking at the front, you would not probably notice it unless you saw that it was a two CD thing. Uh, this one's worth about 50 or 60 bucks. Nice. Because people want that rare version. Now, another reason that you would get tipped off is the spine is not white on the original version. Typically, a lot of imports have a white spine for whatever reason. And so that would make me stop, too. I think the original uh, spine is the same blue as this. Now, that's just me being nerdy with music. I know all my shit, so I could, I could catch that quickly. But there's three things that are telling you that this is not normal. It's a white spine. Obviously, the little note here, excuse me, four things. It's not normally a two CD set, and it's got an import barcode. Okay. So if you're comparing, don't compare this, obviously, to the regular version, because that's worth the penny. Make sure you know what you're talking about. No. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that was our topic today. I just want to make sure um, that you don't leave money on the table like Sophia left money on the table for me. So. She she now owes me a night of dog sitting. That's the that's the repayment, and so she was very excited to hear her punishment was hanging out with a tocha for the evening. So I said, when I'm in a pinch one day, I'm gonna call you, and uh, it's not hard work. You just gotta hang out with a tocha. So she was very excited to know that uh, her mistake only meant she had to play with my dog. A uh, couple of things I've seen in the chat. Uh, your blue plush sitting there on your desk. Uh, Mary is interested in your blue plush. I don't know if it's for sale or not. Oh, no. This is a, my last assistant was cleaning up the office before she left, and she made a whole little scene with uh, my Rancor and my wand and my little plush guy that uh, laughs and shakes. So okay. <laughs> that's, just a little, that's, a, that's just a little scene hang, hanging out back there. Yeah. And then uh, Popeye's postcard said there are some white bases on virus careless for winter too. Yes, there are. Yeah, so it's not yeah. it's not always green, but uh, like the majority of the time they are. So, All right, yeah, so get to our uh, other segments. Let me let's talk real quick about uh, a little bit of housekeeping. So first, coming up really quick this Wednesday, I'm going to be in Salt Lake City. Uh, unbeknownst to me, when I bought my new uh, Ford truck, I get a, a free day at the extreme driving school outside of Salt Lake City. I luck out and happen to live within driving distance. So I'm driving up to Salt Lake on Tuesday. I'm thrifting all the way up. Uh, Wednesday, I'm throwing a class during the day. And then Thursday, I'm racing trucks in the desert coming home Friday. So I have a few slots left in the class. If you're watching this show before Wednesday and you or a friend uh, would uh, benefit from a thrift class in uh, Salt Lake City. We're going to be at one of the major um, the, uh, thrift stores, and we're going to spend three and a half hours going through it section by section, except the kids' clothes. Um, and uh, we'll talk about what to buy and, more <laughs> importantly, what not to buy, and I'll show you how to use all the different apps on your phone to help you make those decisions and to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Right. Well, I, I tell you, for those of you you know that haven't gone and are you're on the fence, I highly recommend it. You will learn so much. I mean, every time I've gone with Jason uh, and either helped out or been just a participant, I learn something every time I have gone. You guys, I mean, it's just amazing what you pick up. Uh, you know, just little tidbits here and there, and uh, well worth it. I mean, probably should be charging more as far as mom's concerned because of the <laughs> knowledge that you, that you help everyone with, honey, it's phenomenal. So, you know, if you guys uh, are, are available, I highly recommend that you sign up. And then I just, uh, if you're watching live right this moment on Sunday afternoon, uh, the link uh, to all the details I just put in the chat, if you're watching after the fact before Wednesday, I, the link will be below in the description. So uh, let me know. And uh, also, you can always hit me up on Facebook. You got any questions. It's pretty easy to find me. I'm around all the time. Good. All the time. All right, and then one uh, more uh, event that both mom and I will be at is Ecom Chicago 2017. This year it is October 19th through the 21st. It is three days. Now, it used to be two days. So mm -hmm. it's still the same two days of speakers, and let's see who the speakers are. Oh, look at that guy, Jason T. Smith. Uh, <laughs> so we're talking all kinds of stuff. So it's not just eBay at this event. Uh, Chris Green's going to be talking about merch. Uh, I'm going to be talk we're, I'm gonna be doing a live uh, thrifty business show. And you might see mom as part of it, but shh, that's a surprise. Don't tell nobody. Uh, Cliff Enico, although dry subject to talk about, talks about legality. So if you're taking your business to the next level, he'll give you all the ins and outs of what you should do to make sure your ass is covered. Right. Uh, and uh, my buddy Eddie and Cynthia, uh, John Lawson's there, Jeff Cohen. 
They're going to be teaching all kinds of different aspects of Amazon, wholesale. You know, mom has attended for every year since I've been going and yeah. always leaves all these grand I new ideas that, that her and dad want to try because you don't just learn about eBay. You learn about all kinds of different uh, aspects of the business. Now, the cool thing is this year, it's the same price as last year, but they added a third day. So here's all the sponsors. So you got FedEx, you got Bubble Fast, you got eBay Advertising, Seller Labs, uh, Scanner Society. They're, the third day, which is actually the first day, is all the sponsors are getting to show and demonstrate their products. So if you use any of these products or want to use, that's the day to make sure you're there because you'll be getting hands-on with the actual people from the different companies. So it's a pretty cool event. Yeah. If you want to save 20 bucks off of your uh, uh, event fee, it's only $1.99 anyway. Uh, if you put in Tiki, T-I-K-I, you get 20 bucks off. And you'll get to see a live turkey business show with some bonus action. You'll see. I got. I have grandiose ideas. I hope they work. Okay, uh, there's a, a post in the chat, honey. Uh, apparently, Piggy Pants has a hotel room at the conference ho uh, hotel that she's going to be letting going. So, if anyone needs it, you know, before she lets it go, maybe they had to let let her know. Yep. There's a free room, not a free room, but a room available in case it's sold out. And uh, we out. last year, we'll probably do it again this year as we rented a bus and went to a tiki bar on Saturday night after the event was over. Because the event's over at 4 o'clock. We all cleaned up and hopped into a party bus with a stripper pole and disco lights. And <laughs> off to the tiki bar we went. As We were like 25 strong, and we had a great time. So I've been uh, practicing. And the tiki <laughs> Good practice, Ima. <laughs> The tiki bar we went to, uh, they've added two things since last year. It got better. They added food, which is cool because we didn't have food last year. You had to scarf something down before you left. And they added a second bar inside the bar. Ooh. So I'll be getting that together. So the event's a ton of fun. Uh, it's a little bit out of the suburbs of Chicago. So come to Chicago, enjoy the city, come out to the suburbs, attend the event. And then like every night after the event's over, there's a Italian restaurant on one side of the event and a sports bar on the other. All the speakers, all the vendors are just hanging out. So if you want to pick our brains about anything, come on up, buy us a beer, sit down. We'll, we'll talk about anything. And usually, Chris Green and I are the last two at the bar. So if you can outlast us, let's see how good you really are. Well, I might have to be at the bar because I'm sure the tribe is going to be there in the World Series. So. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into our mama's boy, where each week I show you a cute and or embarrassing photo of me in my younger years. So uh, I've been showing some older ones, not as a kid as of late. This was 1996, I think. Oh, my. So get ready for those of you who know me like this. <laughs> Just wait. Here we go. Ding, ding, ding. This is Stacy and I on our first cruise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, I have orange hair. Yes, I have giant hoop earrings in. Yes, I have a little tiny baby goatee. And yes, I have shiny black pants. Woo! <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Stacy hasn't changed one bit. Stacy never changes. She always looks terrific. Yeah, Stacy is uh, the picture of Dorian Gray. Yeah, she is. Absolutely. You even had my bar on the bar. This was for fancy night on the cruise. I, my, my idea of fancy was a shiny black pants, a Marvin tie, and you can't really tell. Oh, no, no, those are regular hoops. Yeah. I also had some Marvin hoop earrings, but those are regular hoop earrings. Uh, don't repeat that on the cruise in January, please. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, Mom, Mom, you know this is coming. Nice segue, Ma. Ah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have a subscription-based private Facebook group called The Secret Beach, where each month they get a webinar from me, they get a guest webinar. I just did a webinar Friday night on all about buying, buying and selling Halloween costumes. The guest webinar is tomorrow, all about Poshmark. So if that's something you want to join, The Secret Beach is actually opening in two weeks. But more importantly, the fun angle of it, we do a lot of fun stuff on The Secret Beach. And the next fun thing we're doing is a cruise in January, but we uh, have a few rooms left. So we've opened it up to any of the members of the thrifting board or anyone who's watching our shows. We sail out of New Orleans on January 20th for a five-day cruise with two stops in Mexico and two days on the open seas. There will be classes just for the Seeker Beach members, but there will be a class for all who attend, if you want it. If you want to go to the pool, that's cool too. But uh, we will be having a pretty big class for everyone. 
where there will be multiple instructors, myself, my mother, John Lawson, one of the lifeguards from the thrifting board, Joy Williams. So we'll have a pretty good sized class and we'll make it fun. And we won't make it too long because, of course, the whole point of a cruise is to have fun. But while you're there, might as well learn some stuff, too. Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait. This the Thank goodness we're going to the Western Caribbean, all those poor people in the oh, East. Oh, I know. Such a shame. Such a shame. So uh, if that is something you might want to do, the rooms are almost sold out. We actually had a deadline of a few days ago, but we extended it because we had a few rooms left. And uh, here's the deal. An inside cabin, two ninety nine a person. That's yes. a crazy deal for five days. So, so cheap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, if you can, especially if you're close to New Orleans, you can get there rather cheap to go right. for three hundred bucks a person for five days. That is impressive. And uh, to tip you over, they have twenty four hour pizza and they have twenty four hour ice cream. So oh. you know. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, I don't know if you know this, Ma, but Guy Fieri has a burger restaurant on there too. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, that'd be fun. So uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. So again, hit me up on Facebook. It is super duper easy to find me. My page is public. I'm in the thrifting board. I'm in the secret beach. You got any questions about the class, Ecom, the class in Salt Lake City, Ecom Chicago, or the crew, just message me and I'll help you out with anything. And now, without further ado, it is time for Mom's Course. Okay. Um, this is the- uh, hey, uh, before you start, yeah. uh -huh. Ma, where, did you, where did you send the other score? Oh. Uh, maybe I didn't send it yet. Hold on, let me get to messages. Hold on. You didn't send it yet. That was uh, 37 minutes ago. Come on. Yeah, well, I, I copied it, but <laughs> I never got it over to you. Let me see. Can we, there you are. Okay, I hope it's there. All right, I got it. Okay, okay, go ahead. All right, okay. All right, so uh, this was out of those batch of cameras that, you know, we bought from the bride sale where the lady was giving us everything practically. And uh, so, you know, I put down a quarter for the, the pricing. I mean, I don't even know what to mark these as my cost. Uh, but we're just trying to move them uh, reasonably priced. And uh, this one sold for 10 bucks. Okay, oh, yeah, uh, I've got, I'm going to be showing a group of virus carolers, you guys. Uh, this was the little Indian uh, girl that I picked up. I had my personal one I sold last year. I picked this one up at a garage sale for a dollar. And, you know, for a dollar, you have to buy them, everybody. Just don't pass them up. Uh, this is the Native American Indian uh, girl from 1998, and uh, I, I got a nice uh, price of 32 bucks on her. I, I'm happy on my buyer's carolers, to anywhere from the 30 to the $35 range, unless they're some of the um, hard-to-find ones. Then, of course, I will hold out for more. And, of course, now that we're getting closer to the holidays, I probably won't, you know, let go of these quite so quickly. Okay? Um, did you have the other carolers there, honey, or not? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is uh, the Williamsburg woman holding the uh, uh, a wooden bowl from Plymouth Plantation Collection. And uh, I got full asking price on her of the $39.99. And what was my other one that I had there? Um, one more, I think. Oh, yeah, Salvation yep. Army Lady. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they wanted, they offered me the 3301 because of the shipping being 12 dollars <laughs> Yeah, they also, they just even it out. And, um, and I did accept uh, on that. So. I was happy with that. So, yeah, so there I sold you know, three carolers, everybody, for, you know, some good money. So, oh, remember when I showed this, Jason? The yeah. Platter? I know, it's sold, honey. I mean, I love that platter. I almost kept it myself. I paid $5 for it. And it's just a beauty. I mean, it's just a nice vintage piece, and I got my full asking price of the $39. Um, nice. and I, I kind of hate to see that one go because, you know, Mom likes to entertain, and we eat shrimp a lot over here. And uh, But it, it was a beauty. Probably never see another one. Uh, I know I've talked about Tupperware over and over again. Uh, these are the um, uh, the servalier bowls. What are they? The, the serve bowls. Yeah, seal and serve. That's what it is. Seal and serve vintage bowls. Uh, I picked those up for a dollar, you guys, and I took the price of uh, offer of twelve bucks. So those went. I always pick up Tupperware. Any vintage Tupperware, guys, I, I pick it up. Um, this was uh, I had I had a lot of offers on this costume, and maybe I could have hung it out for the forty bucks, Jason. But they were all, you know, hit me up for 20 bucks, 18, 15. And so when I got the offer of the 30, I thought, okay, I'll jump on that one and let her go. Uh, I thought we did a pretty good job of dumbing her up on the dummy yep. and, and showing the costume. So, uh, but see, how much did I pay for her? Two bucks. So two bucks to 30, that was, that was good. And this is a, a chalkware horse. I know a lot of people have asked us, well, how do you know it's chalkware? There's a certain look. There's a certain feel. 
uh, most old chalkware, you're going to find it with little chips on it here and there. Pretty hard to find anything in perfect condition uh, because of their age. Um, but this one, I, I spent uh, two bucks on it, and I got an offer of 20 and I took it. And a lot of these sometimes, guys, you'll see this. You know, these were, were prizes at carnivals. So, you know, uh, you'll, you'll see some of the Cupid dolls or Snow White or, you know, there's so, a lot of different kinds, but uh, some of them go way back. Um, I've started to sell off my Native American collection, uh, Native American Indian collection uh, that I had in my house. And I'm starting to sell off my pieces. And um, uh, the reason I'm showing some of these guys is always look out for Neil Rose pieces. His are very valuable. There's a lot of other different pieces out there. But his uh, will bring you very good money. I got a nice offer of 90 bucks and uh, was willing to sell it. They're always he became the face of professional wrestling. Oh, sorry, sorry. What happened? Is that me? No, that was me. <laughs> okay. And they're always marked, and they're always usually numbered pieces as well. Um, so, yeah, if you do run across these at any of your sales or anywhere, uh, pick them up. Neil Rose. Try and remember that name if you can. And I just, yeah, I sold a bow and arrow, uh, got an offer of 65 and sold it. But apparently Dad, <laughs> Dad wanted me to sell this one for more, but I couldn't find his listing price that he had put. So no wonder it sold so quickly. I sold it within hours. So apparently I had uh, to All right, Sophia Jr., you, were gonna, you uh, uh, just winged uh, it, huh? I, I did. I did wing it. And I thought I was doing good until Dad said, no, you look close up. Those are like 100 and a quarter. I said, oops. Yeah. So I had, a, I had a you, good. you got a dog sit too. Yep, yep. Where's Yoda? Now, I picked this up, I showed this to you guys back a, you know, a little while ago, and I picked up a bunch of vintage books, and uh, the book cost me a whole dollar, and as you can see, I got an offer of 20 bucks, and that was great. So, you know, uh, Mommy sold, so it's just a small little little book, it was one of Mom's favorites as a kid growing up, so that shows you how old that book goes back to. Okay, and I showed this, guys, remember on my haul not too, too long ago? That was the uh, the uh, men's foot size. In fact, Jason, you even questioned mom, I think. He said, those sell? As you can see, they do. We paid four bucks for it and got uh, the thirty-one ninety-nine. Nice. That was, yeah, that was a nice return on that one. And uh, the, uh, this is going back to the lot of the, the phones uh, also that we had. This is a, a princess blue phone. Uh, I paid 50 cents for this one, guys. I did, but this was separate. And I uh, took the offer of 15 and they are heavy, you guys, so, you know, you can ship them in one of your flat rate boxes when you get to those kind. Uh, this was a good uh, score, Jason. You know, remember we bought these nine albums? Yeah, they were all old. I mean, two uh, hauls ago. Yeah, and uh, we finally got a nice uh, offer of $44 from the, four, from the 50, and I thought that was uh, a nice offer, actually. So, you know, we sold those, and we paid uh, 3 bucks for the records and sold them for 44 Nice. Yeah, so that's pretty cool, huh? Okay, remember when I showed all my gravel art last week? Okay, this is the one that mom sold. This is the Chinese girls, and I believe they're Chinese or Asian. And um, I had paid $18 for it, but I sold it for $44. And I've got a lot of lookers uh, looking at uh, some of my other ones that I showed you guys last week. So always look for the gravel art, guys. It, it seems to be a hot item right now. And, uh, you know, oh, I wish I would have bought more of these. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, they, they had... Tons of them. In fact, I still have a lady's phone number. I'm going to give her a call and go back because this sold like right away. It cost us three dollars, um, and you can see I, it sold for twenty three ninety nine. And they do have a bunch more, so I am going to call her. So if you're finding any of these ceramic porcelain uh, hands, um, in fact, I, we saved one because I want to use that for um, you know our display purposes when we're you know taking photos of different things. And uh, I, so I didn't want to give up the other one. I, I we only bought two, so. That was not a good thing. We should have bought a bunch and then offered her two bucks a piece. And I'm going to end with this because I, I couldn't show you this in the hall last week because I already sold. But I'm going to kind of transfer right into my hall, Jason, with this one. Hold on a second. Oh, my goodness. This thing weighs an absolute ton. Okay, let me get myself up on the screen. So we ended up at this garage sale where this lady had um, two... Um, vintage sewing machines. And here's, oh, good Lord, here's the other <laughs> one. And it weighs a ton. And she had 10 bucks each on them. And uh, so we offered her $10 for the pair and took it. So as you see, if you want to go back to my picture, Jason, on the one I just sold, 
It cost me $5 and I sold it for $51.99. And it didn't even really work all the way. Um, I had my friend Betty come over, who is a, what do you call her? Entrepreneur, well, ex a total expert on sewing and sewing machines. I mean, the woman's just phenomenal and she does so much sewing for us. And uh, she came over and, and she got this one going, the one that weighs a ton. Nice. And yeah, that one's working just fine. Uh, but the vintage one sold a little quicker. So, but I do have some lookers on this one. And, oh, and it, it came, you know, with its case for five bucks. So, yeah. So, All right, this yeah. is the whole point of the condition field. Nowhere in the condition field do you say this doesn't work so well. well did I say that? No, no, no. Yeah, get rid, get rid of the use but not abuse. You, you just sold an item that don't work all that well. Get rid of that. Okay. You've got to put what you put in the description in your condition field. That's the whole point of the condition field. Uh, what, what should I have said, huh? Well, you, right here it says uh, everything runs and needle starts to go up but then stops. Okay. You need to put that in the condition field, item condition. Oh, okay, okay. Right. right now, Ma, you are not covered. So when the customer gets in and goes, wait, this don't work right, you're probably going to take a return. Oh, well, let's hope not. Have well, you heard that, 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 there's your lesson, everybody. That is the whole point of the item condition field. Do okay. Any, that's where you put your defects in. Yeah, well, I, yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. Yep. All right. Um, I okay. I got your lesson on here, the Polaroid. Oh, okay. That was the last. Uh, that also came. That was a Polaroid one step. Uh, so I put fifty cents in for the price of that, and we sold it for fourteen bucks. Nice. So we've done, we've done really well on those cameras. You know, the whole box of cameras for ten dollars. You know, so uh, it's been adding up as, as we've gone along. I mean, they are they are moving. So so that's really good, really good. Okay, now do you want me to continue on? Yeah, see, okay, what, don't have a whole what did you find this week? What did you find on your way to and fro, Maryland? <laughs> well, not as much as I was hoping. I'll show you what I found on the trip first. Um, okay. This is, this is a goodie, though. Okay, let me get Dad's notes because Dad did the research. Okay. I got to get it up right away. Oh, you wow. Yeah, isn't this cute? They had six dollars. No, was this the one? No, no, no. I, I bought this for. Yeah, actually, I did spend a little bit of money on this one, guys. This is a Puleo, P U L E O, tree company. It's the haunted house. I did pay fifteen bucks for it. It was uh, she had a half price booth, and I, um, I, I said, oh, I think this might be a goodie. They didn't have the box. I was sorry to say. Um, let's see. Let's see the. Uh, yeah, the name there is really hard to read, guys. I don't even think I can get it. Oh, I'm upside down. But it is Polio down on there. Can you see it, Jason? Way at the bottom where my fingers are. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and that's the brand name, you know, that we did our research on. And I paid 15 bucks for it, but I'm going to list this for $69. I mean, these uh, these are these are right up there in price, everybody. And so, of course, I got to get that. That's a cool base. Yeah, isn't that a neat piece? I mean... I'm sure the granddaughters would love to see that. <laughs> and then this was in the Goodwill. I just turned this one on. Okay. Can you see it, it is lighting? It does light. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh on this particular one, you guys, it was marked six dollars and fifty-nine cents. But we couldn't get the bulb to work. And so we asked the girl if they would take any less, and they said, yes, he blinks. Um we would uh, she would take four dollars, and I'm listing this for fifty nine bucks, gang. So this uh, this is a nice little piece here. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, you paid four dollars. Where's your usual? I paid a nickel. What happened? Yeah, not not there. <laughs> That's at garage sales. Oh my bad, my bad. <laughs> All right. So then we have the uh, Tupperware canister set. Okay, you guys. I'm sure. Can you see the? Uh, the logo of Tupperware on the bottom always. And this is a four-piece set with lids. It's always nice to make sure that they have the lids, everybody. Um, you know, so I got the four different sizes. Okay. And I now this one I did pay two dollars and I have it up for 30 bucks. Okay. So always, always buy your, your vintage Tupperware. The new stuff, not so much, guys. So just, you know, be careful of that. They're they're looking for the, the vintage. Um, you list the color in the title. I do. Okay. 
And that that one has a special name. It's rose petal or something. Yeah, that's what remember. I was kind of thinking when you were showing that. Like that's not a normal color, especially nowadays. That's not a normal color. Yeah, I I, I think it was like something like rose petal. But then I also put mauve because it, it, it's more of a mauve shade. So you know, I did do that. Gail Richardson says purple. <laughs> um, picked up a couple of purses. I like this. This is all about tennis. Oh yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. All yeah. about tennis. Yeah, mom has. I don't know if you remember my my Christmas purse, Jason, but it's the same same feel and make. But there there is no label inside this purse at all. Mom searched and searched, but inside is pretty clean, so not bad. And I paid two bucks for the purse, so I think I don't know. I'm, I'm I haven't really done a whole lot of research yet, Jason. I'm thinking around twenty five, thirty bucks. What do you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, on that one, and then. Yeah, you know, if it had an actual brand that people look for, definitely more. But without the brand, you're just going on the look of it. I know, I know. I was so hoping that it, you know, the brand would be there. And then I picked up this cute straw bag, which I'm really. Oh, wow! Yeah. I know. Well, go on the cruise. I know. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Unless someone out there wants this for the cruise, let me know. This is oh yeah. Really As always, if you, anything Mom is selling that you like, just hit yep. me or her up directly, and be happy to work out a deal. Because you got the starfish on there, a little bit of coral and whatnot. So, you know, it's clean on the other side. And they're pretty clean on the inside, everybody. But really a cute, cute scrub egg. So if it doesn't sell, I just might have to take it on the cruise. And again, two bucks, you guys, uh, for that. It does, You can't really see, but it's got little bugle beads around the coral. So you do have some sparkle on the bag. So I don't know if it's coming across all that well. Okay. And I can't remember if I showed this. Did I show this last week? No. Okay. All right. Because, you know, mom's always been picking up the metal waste baskets Back because, in. yeah, they have sold well for me. And this is a nice vintage one of Snoopy and, and Charlie Brown. Um, let's see. Do I have the year on this one? 1969, everybody. And it's not too bad on the inside. I mean, you know, you're not going to find these in great shape usually. But, uh, you know, when I, I pay two bucks for this, I have it up for $28. Hey, do the rest of the show talking into the can because it sounds fun. Oh, hello out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, at the one Goodwill in Hagerstown that we were in, do we have any people that live in the Hagerstown area uh, that are watching today? I don't know. Boy, they had some gorgeous scrubs. And for a buck and a half a piece, you guys. No scrubs. So I got this great Halloween cute print, so that's going up right away. You know, and I'll probably I probably go I go around fifteen bucks on these the scrubs when I hit the Disney ones, guys. And here's a cute Disney one. You got Tank and you got Mick and uh, Daisy. Oh, no, Tank. Oh, wow, yeah. Here's another one. Yeah, you got Minnie, but we got the grass skirt hula thing going on here, Jason. So you know, Mom likes that, and then. Got a little this this one looks brand new. It doesn't even feel like it's been washed because the material is still stiff with the piece signs on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was cute. And then, hold that one back up. Yep. Okay. I was trying to see if there's anything in that purple pattern behind the piece signs, but it ain't. It's yeah. just a purple pattern. I thought about that. It doesn't I don't think so, huh? Yeah, I don't think it is, but for a second I was like, hmm. No. <laughs> the next uh, Goodwill that we went to, uh, their all their scrubs were four bucks. So I didn't buy any, you know, for four bucks. I think I couldn't do it. And here's Kermit. So really, some cute, cute prints here. And my last one is Bambi, little Bambi. Oh, little Bambi. And, and most of these are all bigger sizes, you know, which was nice. So that always, always helps, as we all know. To go for the larger sizes. Um, and Jason said he doesn't think that I showed this last week, and I can't remember, guys. I picked this up. I do love the I do love the fact that we can see the ghost still flying around in the background. That is that cool. if he's walking into the trash can. This might be the best episode ever. I if I, if I move that <laughs> right here. Sure. Like, there, perfect. How about that? Can you see it even better? Yeah. There you go. Um, I don't know if I showed this last week, guys, and if I did, tell me, because um, this is a buyer's carriage uh, that normally, uh, back in the day, it sold for $175, and I'm putting mine up for $100 and a quarter. Um, I, don't, I think there might be one other one 
uh, up there. Um, it will have, let me see if I can get this turned around for you, everybody. I believe there's the buyer's marking, Jason. Uh, I'm not getting it by the camera very well, am I? No. Not really? Is it coming through at all? Nah, it's too blown out. No. Um, I mean, it, but it does buy your We trust you. Uh, I guess it's not the round one that you normally see on the caroler, so it is a little bit different, but it is marked. So, like I say, their stuff is usually always marked. There. And got one more thing to show you guys. Um, this is a, uh, a cactus made into a mirror, the inside of a cactus. Wow. Made into a mirror. And I'm not too sure what I'm going to sell this for, Jason. This is coming out of Mom's personal collection, but I just oh, find it. Oh, thrift that? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't thrift this. So, you know, so this is something that Mom's going to be putting up um, on her own. And uh, I just haven't fooled with this uh, enough to, uh, you know, get, get a, a price on it. But mirrors always sell well. Uh, I have sold a number of mirrors uh, over the years, and they always sell well. And that was the re main reason for showing that. And I've sold some bamboo mirrors. And when we ship those, you know, we do use the, the – pool noodles you know to to uh preserve them so they don't you know don't break it gives it gives it a nice soft filling fill, filling so that helps a lot but uh that's that was the main reason for showing mirrors in case anybody shies away you know from uh selling a mirror and uh we had a great sale uh yesterday but you'll have to tune in next sunday for that Ooh, a little a little cliffhanger I like it. <laughs> so I like that's it. that's it i think i'm done Look at that. We're coming in actually a little under. So cool. Good, good. Thank you, good. everyone, for tuning in. Like I said, no thrifty business this week because that's the day I'm actually racing trucks through the desert. Uh, right. But if you uh, if you are in the Salt Lake City area, and wait, what's the date today? Today is the 24th. Uh, so if you are listening to this before the 27th and you want to take my class, uh, feel free to drop me a note on Facebook or head over to the thrifting board and we'll get you all signed up and if you want to join us in chicago for ecom chicago for three days of learning and fun including oh, yeah. a karaoke party yeah for sure absolutely for sure for that too and then if you want to go on the cruise we've already got I mean, we got a big group already Ma. We're, we're upwards around 80 or 90 people so oh far oh my so. gosh oh my gosh i assume we're, we're like, we, we have taken a group of about 44 was our biggest group and we we kind of own the boat and everywhere you went you ran to a friend Man, with 90, we will own the boat. I, I assume we're going to do a matching shirt of some kind? Oh, yeah. Okay. We got yeah, to do that. I'll, I'll tell you guys a quick story. We'll end on this. And I've told it before, but some of you might not have heard it. We uh, we took a cruise with family and friends, about 20 of us, out of uh, the Southern Caribbean. So you went to Puerto Rico first, and then you went out of there. So we spent the weekend in Puerto Rico drinking pina coladas, having a good time seeing the island. And the second the boat left, I got a viral infection, and I was sick the entire week. Oh. So every day we would dock someplace exotic and beautiful, and I never got off the boat because I was sick. And uh, so mom and dad and, and aunts and uncles and friends and wife went off and played. And then they came back, and then we would, I would be strong enough to leave my room to go play trivia. That's all we did, really. That's all I did the whole cruise, really. I, I spent thousands of dollars to be sick and play trivia. That's all I did. But yeah. the last trivia contest, and at this point, we had done well, we're playing the trivia contest, and I'm weak. I'm just – I am beat. <laughs> I am weak. I'm coughing all the time. Yep. I'm on a lot of drugs. The question, I forget the exact question, but it was what company, blah, blah, blah. And the answer was Anheuser Busch. And they said, what company? And so when they would give the question, then they'd ask for the answers and we graded, we'd grade our own thing kind of thing. And so I said Anheuser Busch and he said, correct. And the people in front of us said Budweiser. And the guy around the contest said, yes, yeah, that's fine. And I went, uh uh, the question was, what company? And the people in front of us turned around, looked at me, and they said, you've won everything this week. <laughs> we were good. <laughs> and I said, yes, and your answer is still wrong, and I'm still winning this one, too. <laughs> I mean, we, between you and my brother and, and mom and a few of the other people, we had every era covered. You know, mom had the early old-time stuff. Jason and my brother had music and, and a lot of other great, you know, uh, topics that they're very, very vers versified in. It, it was awesome, and it was just a blast. So I can't wait to do this with a bunch of us because it will be a, a lot of fun, everybody, and I just can't wait for that, too. That's and with 90, because there's going to be some of us, like myself, who will be up late, 
And there'll be yep. some others who will be going to bed on the earlier side and up early, like my dad. So yep. no matter what kind of person you are with that big of a group, if you're up at like 6 a.m. walking the track, you'll run into people in the group. If you're at the disco at, at 2 a.m. dancing and then getting pizza at 3 a.m., you'll find me there. So you'll always find someone in the group, and it'll it'll be a ton, right. a ton of fun. So yep. uh, if you want to go, hit us up. Uh, like I said, we got a big group of thrifters going, and it's got to be a lot of fun. All ages, too. we got all ages going. Uh, from young to mom super old, like mom. Late. Mom will be up late. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's it. It's time oh, to go uh, see how my oh, pack is. Wait, wait, wait. One more thing, honey. Um, a, a couple of people um, on our um, posting uh, are wondering if there's if we can have a set time for the show. And I don't know if that's possible, but I just thought I'd throw it out there to you. Um, you know, if we are going to stick with Sunday nights, do we want to try and establish a certain hour? For Sundays, or we, that hard we try, but, but both your and my travel schedule may. I mean, we could try and have a set until those times we we travel. But and I know I'm traveling a ton in the next two months. So, I you know if that's something you guys want, I can sit down and try and figure out a best of uh, version where maybe we'll hit it seventy five percent of the time, and there are twenty five percent. You'll just have to follow us. Um, let me throw this out to the group that is watching. Uh, do you prefer a Sunday evening? Do you prefer it a little bit later? I mean, you know, maybe even nice to get the feedback from, you know, those that of you that are watching. I know some of winter is coming, so really daytime hours don't matter because <laughs> you're going to be inside anyway. Right, 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 right. That's true. Uh, but I know a lot of them go to church, um, you know, Sunday functions, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe a little bit later on Sunday evening. I don't know. You know I'm just throwing doesn't, it out. Listening to Slipknot on the way to church. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, let us know. <laughs> Give us some feedback. You know, if, if uh, yeah, if, so we can kind of play with it a little bit. See, if, you know, we can meet the masses. Okay. Okay. After the Browns and Indians and Cavs are done, so that means we won't have a show until uh, never. <laughs> they were pathetic again today. We lost by three points. Oh, oh I almost bet against them, and I couldn't because we were favored. I know. Yeah, we were favored, but we lost by three. <laughs> Sorry, Annie. Thank God but, for the Indians and the Cavs. The tribe is beating Seattle right now, three to two. If they win today, that's number ninety-eight wins for the tribe. So cross my fingers. Yeah, yeah. Love to see him hit one hundred. All right, late. Uh, Robert says late Sunday afternoon or Sunday night. So yeah. All right, I, I will figure out an exact time. Okay. Uh, uh, that we can try to hit most of the time. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, like I said, no thrifty business, but we, Mom and I, we will be back uh, next Sunday. And since I'm thrifting my way up to Salt Lake and back, there will be a thrift haul maybe even next weekend, like a Saturday night or a Friday night or something. Uh, okay. So as soon as I get home, I will compile all this stuff together. I am planning on filling the bed of my truck, so I hope I find a lot of stuff in Salt Lake City. Yeah. City, you better hurry up because I'm coming. Yeah, I'm for coming sure. For sure. Lots of good stuff uh, ahead on the calendar, everybody. Sure hope we see you all there. Yep. All righty. Okay. For selling, for selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50, I'm Jay. I'm Peg. We're gone. Bye, We're everybody. Gone. Bye.